Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, thanks for joining me. I'm Katie and today is an upgrade kind of day. Before we get started, I just want to say I have recently hit 800 subscribers and this is my 200th video. So thank you so much to all of you for supporting me it really does mean the world and 200 videos i've been doing this for over a year now i can't believe i've done 200 so thank you for your support it means the world to me and let's get on with the box shall we so upon opening it we we have to start with snazaru mini face paint kit and that's this month's gimmick so yeah, I do end up using that and you'll see very shortly. We have the Portofino 10 sheets DIN A5 and that's a bit like a mixed media paper. It's 100% cotton and it works with techniques for watercolours, gouache, inks, acrylics. But they've paired them with the Do into light fast pencils, which I'm guessing is the main feature for this month. I have been so excited to try these. We also have a Rembrandt Splendor, and that's a blending pencil to you and me, a Graffitos Pencil in HB, and a Mo Mobius and Rupert Little Quattro Swing Special Sharpener. Basically, it sharpens your leads either long and pointy or short and pointy, that's the best way to put it. The month's featured artist is Max Shurishin. I hope I've said that right and you would have seen the card for that at the very start of this video. Anyway, let's get swatching and talk a bit more about these materials. Now I'm sure you've noticed lately I've been very watercolour based material centric. So I'm a bit out of practice with coloured pencils but these are an absolute treat and I have had my eye on purchasing some of these. So they are the Do Into Light Fast Pencils and they're meant to be 100% light fast. I was never sure if it would actually affect coloured pencils or not but apparently it does. We have them in six colours which are Mid Ultramarine, Violet, Magenta, Mallard Green, Foliage and yellow ochre and they go on that paper like a dream and they blend so beautifully and that's without the blending pencil however that does tend to smush things along and adds a bit of a burnishing effect I guess. The paper itself is oh it's gorgeous it's just lovely nice thick solid feeling paper and it does have a bit of a texture to it which is picked up by the coloured pencils although I am still a little curious as to why it's pitched as being for I suppose wet techniques but we've got them with coloured pencils however it's a nice combination nonetheless the graphite pencil is exactly that it's HB it has an eraser at the top it draws it erases it does what you want the pencil sharpener is really good actually, I'm always in the market for a good sharpener because I either break them or lose them so it's always good to have some there. This month's upgrade battle is drawing vegetables and I, I was tempted because I have been growing some to go and pick some out the garden and draw them but some of them weren't quite ready yet or some of them uh, the lovely resident slugs and snails had got to so I, I decided to pretty much do this from imagination. However, in the spirit of my homegrown veg, I thought I would do a character tending to them because I, I don't, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make it a bit more of a challenge and also I am cheating because I'm not very good at drawing anything botanical. So I thought little baby steps, we'll draw a character and a vegetable and all will be good. So yes, my character is gardening. She is planting or tending to a purple sprouting broccoli because that's what I've attempted to grow and I've only managed to get a couple of stalks off it. So I'll maybe try again next year, I guess. But I thought that would be a really nice way to use these colors and create a bit of a narrative around it, I guess. My favourite colours, I must admit, are the violet, the magenta and the mallard green. I don't know what it is, but there's just something about that combination of colours and that mallard green 
it's sort of got a hint of teal to it. I was expecting it to have more of a yellow tone based on its name, but no, it's, it's, ju it's just got a bit of a blue in there that just creates this nice teal base, I guess. Anyway, I'm digressing a little here. So obviously we have a limited colour palette. I, it would have been nice to have had more of a warmer red in there, but then it's not much of a challenge if it's all there for you, is it? And it's got to get the old grey matter going so you can improvise and work through a problem. And I could have done with one for the skin tone, but I thought these pencils blend beautifully so why don't I just try and make some form of skin tone or at least blend some colours together where it gives the illusion and your eye mixes those colours up for you which is what I did on well, our, on our character's skin. For our character's clothing as well I thought she would look really nice wearing an apron which matched her headband as well and I, I really like it I mean this character is taking better care of the garden than I do so maybe these maybe these are goals for me <laughs> I don't know but yes I, I like the colour scheme that I eventually did and again going back to how these coloured pencils blend it's lovely it, they're so gorgeous to work with now I know broccoli leaves especially they have a bit more of a cooler green to them but i thought the mallard green was perhaps just a little bit too blue and the foliage was a little bit too sappy so you're just gonna have to you're gonna have to fill that in with your imagination there and they aren't the best best broccoli leaves in the world but it doesn't matter it's a vegetable and i'm totally sticking with it now I do use coloured pencils. I haven't done for a while because, like I said earlier, very watercolour based at the moment. I, I try something new, but I always go back to watercolours. But I do really enjoy working with coloured pencils and they are one of my favourite mediums to take to live drawing classes with me because there's, there's no waiting for anything to dry. I can get that colour down straight away. And if I use a good quality coloured pencil as well, it just makes things so much better, so much more enjoyable to work with. So these will be coming with me once life drawing classes start back up and they will be in the life drawing bag, bag for a good reason, not a bad one. I'm actually really happy with this month's box. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've been loving all the water based mediums that we've been having, but it was really nice to get working with coloured pencils again and refinding these old techniques and again oh yeah, I've not been to life drawing for well over six maybe seven months so you could say I'm a little rusty with these techniques however I, I feel like I might have retained some of them and I like to use the very side of the pencil by really tilting it on its side and gently applying the colours and then for the details getting that pencil nice and sharp just so them fine areas can stand out a little bit more. I think because they are an oil-based coloured pencil, I didn't, I mean, I still chipped the very tips of the pencils because I am quite heavy-handed. However, they were a little bit more forgiving than the wax-based ones I've used before. And again, they layered up beautifully. I, f I felt like, I almost felt like I was painting with these, you could say. It sounds so poetic, doesn't it? But I did and it was lovely and I must admit the graphite pencil normally I just use them for the sketching part but I actually thought it, it was good enough to add some of the outlines and areas too. Now one colour I really could have done with was a brown just so it could represent the earth beneath it but that's easily overcome by how beautifully these blend and yes okay it, it's not a traditional brown colour but you get the gist. I think this is one of those drawings I've done where your eye just has to mix some of the colours for you. And of course achieving a natural hair colour wasn't really going to happen so I just added a few of the other colours in there like the green and the ochre and then she's got red hair and we've got magenta but I think adding those two other colours have just toned it down a little bit so it doesn't look quite so artificial. Anyway, this is this month's Upcrate box done. I'll just give a quick recap of the contents. We had the Derwent Lightfast pencils, the Rembrandt Splendor pencil, the Graffitos pencil in HB, 
the Little Quattro Special Sharpener by Mobius and Rippet. And this month's gimmick was the Snazaroo face paint and the paper was the Portofino Din in A5. I just want to say a massive thank you for watching and again a massive thank you to all of you lovely subscribers who've got me up to 800. I can't believe it. If you haven't already though, why not join in and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. If you've enjoyed it, hit like and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!